we are going to discuss very fundamental or basic part of Indian polity that is how the parliamentary structure and federal structure that is working in India. So this is a series of shots which will go by part 1, part 2, part 3 like that. So first we are going to discuss what is the situation. I am explaining through some diagram that is we are calling this as Venn diagram, not exactly Venn diagram but sort of Venn diagram. So first this is precedent, then obviously uh, precedent is part of parliament. So this box I am uh, showing here, this is actually a parliamentary box. Here two houses are there, one is called as upper house, other is called as lower house. Upper house that is called as Rajya Sabha in India, whereas lower house uh, is called as Loka Sabha in India. Now uh, here I have to show something different part. This is we have to say the council of ministers. So in this diagram only I am showing you the council of ministers. The reason is that a uh, council member may be member of Rajya Sabha. So I am giving some space here. Council member may be member of Loka Sabha. So I am giving space here. Or while joining council member that uh, minister may not be member of any house. But within six months he or she or it now must achieve the status either member of Lok Sabha or member of Rajya Sabha. As a result, I am showing here this uh, council part which is outside also. So a layman can become minister. Answer yes. No doubt he is not member of either Lok Sabha or Rajya Sabha at time of his or her appointment. But within six months that should get fulfilled. That means either that person must become, become member of Loka Sabha or Rajya Sabha uh, within six months. So that's why we are keeping this side aside. So this way uh, we are showing this is the central government structure. Now we are aware the capacities of Loka Sabha, Rajya Sabha, all that. And uh, actually the council of minister is having all powers. And that powers are executed through president. Now we are discussing structure of state government. So here I have to show various state governments are there. So like that many. But here I am showing only one part. Now uh, purposefully I have connected this president with this box. This is governor. Now it Maybe I am showing that's why a sort of dotted line here. This is called as upper house and this is sure this is lower house. So same structure is here and obvious thing this is the part this is council of ministers. So here this is called as legislative council and this is called as legislative assembly. The legislative council that is also called as Vidhana Sabha, uh, sorry Vidhana Parishad and legislative assembly is called as Vidhana Sabha. So this is for state government. Obviously it is led by a person constitutional chief that is a governor. Now here in state also same thing is there council of ministers. The council member may be member of a legislative council may be member of legislative assembly or may not be member of both the houses. Now intentionally I have shown here some dotted part. That means legislative council is uh, their answer is may be there, may not be there. So for that purpose it is state government's achievement that whether they should keep this or not partly. And partly by central government also because certain laws rules are set up so that state can have legislative council. Legislative council is often be called as uh, ornament. We have to say this is an ornament because uh, that uh, is 
रिक्वायर आंसर इज इट इज सर्विंग लाइक ऑर्नामेंट इट इज एसेन्शियल आंसर इज विदाउट ऑर्नामेंट यू कैन मूव सो इट इज नॉट एसेन्शियल बट इफ इट इज देअर देन इट इन्क्रीजेस युअर व्हॅल्यू सो लाईक दॅट दिस लेजिस्लेटिव्ह काउन्सिल दॅट इज देअर फॉर स्टेट गव्हर्नमेंट सो वन मे कनेक्ट दिस वे दॅट गव्हर्नर इज कनेक्टेड टू प्रेसिडेंट राज्यसभा कॅन बी इक्वी व्हॅलंट आय एम नॉट सेईंग इट इज इक्वी व्हॅलंट बिकॉज मेनी स्टेट्स आर नॉट हॅव्हिंग लेजिस्लेटिव्ह काउन्सिल बट दोज हू हॅव फॉर देम इट इज सर्व्हिंग समवॉट सिमिलर टू राज्यसभा आय एम सेईंग समवॉट सिमिलर टू राज्यसभा बिकॉज व्हॉट द पॉवर्स राज्यसभा पजेस दॅट ऑल पॉवर्स आर नॉट पजेस बाय विधान परिषद दॅट इज लेजिस्लेटिव्ह काउन्सिल सो दिस इज पार्ट ऑफ लेजिस्लेटिव्ह काउन्सिल अँड लेजिस्लेटिव्ह असेंबली वी कॅन कम्पेअर विथ लोकसभा सो लाईक दॅट मेनी स्टेट्स आर देअर अँड आय मे कन्सिडर धिस ॲज फॉर अदर स्टेट्स ऑल्सो सो दिस इज सिम्पली वी कॅन मेक स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ अवर गव्हर्नमेंट दिस इज व्हेरी व्हेरी फंडामेंटल पार्ट आय होप यू आर अवेअर ऑफ दिस ऑल पार्ट वॉट एव्हर आय हॅव डिस्कस बट इफ यू आर नॉट युअर बिगिनर इन दिस फील्ड देन फॉर बिगिनर दिस व्हिडिओ पर्टिक्युलरली दिस वेन डायग्रॅम लाईक स्ट्रक्चर्स they are really helpful now in next short we are going to discuss now uh, we discuss here that uh, we are going to discuss now this is called as central government and this is called as state government uh, i am again uh, clearly mentioning here that legislative council is uh, may be there or may not be there that is a question of law and that state Uh, central government and that particular state so uh, if it is there then always uh, we have to say resemblance now we are focusing on central government and how it functions in next video now in case of central government obvious thing is that this is the president now uh, in british constitution this place is there for king whereas Uh, in american constitution this is called as president so here we took name from america that is president and power resembling i am not saying same to same but powers resembling to king of england are uh, adopted here for president many people are saying president act as a rubber stamp but it is not a case that certain extraordinary powers are there in hands of president so president is chief here uh, again i am saying this is youtube short so we are not discussing in detail we are discussing just at glance for details you have to observe our regular videos that is there on our youtube channel savarkar ias study circle full length videos are available over there now uh, rajya sabha that is upper house of parliament uh obviously senior members are expected there and uh, it is called as a permanent house of parliament so this is the criteria and members of rajya sabha are not directly elected by the public they are indirectly elected by public and uh, this is called as a senior or upper house of parliament now lok sabha represents direct representation of people therefore it is called as lok sabha resembling to uh, in case of england there that is called as bicameral legislature so where we have two chambers uh, in urdu what kamra is called as like that you can understand bicameral so two chambers are there the upper house and lower house so upper house that stands for uh, in england it is called as house of lords and lower house is called as house of commons we named only rajya sabha and lok sabha now this is upper house rajya sabha this is lok uh, lower house lok sabha now here power is literally there in hands of members of lok sabha because the members of lok sabha are directly elected by public and therefore their strength i am writing here that is now this is the maximum capacity keep in mind whatever number i am writing this is the maximum capacity it is not necessary these many members should be there but this is the maximum capacity whereas here the capacity is 250 so uh, whenever there is dispute between lok sabha and rajya sabha chances if are there 
then obviously Lok Sabha is given full vantage that 550 members are there, they are more than double of members of Rajya Sabha. Now, uh, Lok Sabha enjoys certain great power which Rajya Sabha is not having. For example, money bill, anything related with money, that is uh, tax, then expenditure or loan, that everything regarding with money, financial conditions, they are discussed in Lok Sabha only. That is also, if money bill is there, then money bill is presented in Lok Sabha by a recommendation of president only. So this way, Lok Sabha enjoys certain other power because directly uh, public representation is there in Lok Sabha. But the council of minister, minister can be from any part, from Lok Sabha or from Rajya Sabha. Discussing about ministers. So, uh, first obvious thing, Prime Minister. So in India, now what we uh, made our constitution accordingly, Prime Minister is really chief, publicly elected chief. And uh, oath is given by president. But who is that? Answer is simple, the person who claims that half plus majority is there. That is, we are generally calling simple majority. That means if in Lok Sabha, suppose 540 seats are there, then 540 divided by 2. So here, uh, 540, yeah, it can be there because less than 550 divided by 2. So, answer is 270. So, if 270 plus 1, what is simple majority here? So, if 546 are there in Lok Sabha, see here I have written 550, this is maximum capacity. But in particular elections, suppose elections were completed for 546, then what is simple majority? So we have to divide this by 2. So here we are getting answer as 270 plus 1. This is called as simple majority. So that is actually half of the seats plus one, this word we are calling simple majority. Sometime two third majority is also required, but not in case of becoming prime minister. So the person who claims that I have simple majority or more than that in parliament, then that person is appointed as president, uh, appointed as prime minister by president. Uh, is it sufficient? Anybody can claim. And for that purpose, uh, in session of parliament, particularly a uh, Loka Sabha session, that person who says that I am having simple majority, that person must prove uh, that is called as vote of confidence. So that must be passed in parliament. Therefore, if that is passed, then all right, that person continues working as uh, prime minister. But if that is not able to pass, then obviously he is not capable, he or she that is not capable of making uh, or working like Prime Minister. So try to recollect uh, the case uh, when uh, the great leader Atal Bihari Vajpayee first time become Prime Minister. At that time he was not able to prove this. So his government lasted at 13 days. 13 days because uh, the majority that vote of confidence should be passed within 14 days of the taking oath. So when person is appointed as Prime Minister after that within 14 days that person should pass the majority, that is a vote of confidence in the parliament. Now, along with prime minister, other all ministers are also appointed. Prime minister is appointed by president, but remaining all ministers are appointed by president with uh, consulting with prime minister. So here, prime minister's decision is important. And this way, this council is taking place. So, Lok Sabha directly elected, Lok Sabha directly elected, then council member uh, that is selected people, out of that prime minister should have majority, then after that prime minister is going to appoint all other ministers 
but the person may be member of Lok Sabha at time of appointment, may be member of Rajya Sabha at time of appointment or may not be member of any house at time of appointment. If that person is not member, then within six months that person should achieve this status. So this way our council of ministers is there and now going towards Rajya Sabha. Rajya Sabha is upper house of parliament where uh, we have uh, total capacity that is 250 out of that 238 are elected members whereas 12 members are nominated members so let us talk of elected members so they are elected from states state legislature these uh, voting rights are there and this way they represent truly the states in India that's why it is called as Rajya Sabha now to the surprise uh, here the tenure of each member, I am not saying Rajya Sabha, tenure of each member is of 6 years whereas Rajya Sabha is permanent house. So every year, uh, after every 2 years, one third members are going to retire and that is added again. This way Rajya Sabha is having continuity. So every 2 years, one third are going to retire and one third are going to get added. So this way Rajya Sabha functions. Now, uh, President. President is capable, actually the person should capable of getting elected in Lok Sabha. It is not necessary person must belong to Lok Sabha. Okay? But when that person is going for election, at that time that person should not hold any office of profit in government. That means existing prime minister will not able to fight for uh, look, uh, for uh, presidentship election. So at that time that person should not have any post in hand and then person can fight. So president uh, is there. Any person in India can contest this presidentship election provided certain rules and regulations are there. We have to follow that rules that uh, who is going to nominate you, then uh, second you and all that things are there. But uh, age criteria, nationality criteria, all these things are there. But uh, it is not necessary that at time of appointment person should be member of Lok Sabha or Rajya Sabha. This condition is not at all there. But after getting elected, that person is having right to speech, uh, right to deliver speech in parliament. So no doubt. The person is not member of Lok Sabha or Rajya Sabha but giving speech in parliament. So this is the president's power we can say. Now uh, this way our central government works. In India what is the fantastic thing that whatever the state number of states or what and central government both are having only single constitution. It is not that states are having separate constitution and central government is having separate. No, in a single constitution, states as well as uh, central government is mentioned. Now, states are under full control of central government. And for that purpose, the president is having power to appoint governor. Now, this is, we particularly borrowed from 1935's act, but this is essential so that in case of India, we are calling India as Union of States. Now, uh, Legislative Assembly, same. People are elected from directly public. Legislative Council, uh, indirect representation if it is there. Council of Minister, maybe here, maybe here or maybe outside. But what are the laws that is bill that is passed by state government? that is converted into law only when governor is going to sign that and for any problematic thing governor is having power to send his bill to president and president can think over it for as many as years he want and this way uh, state government is under full control of central government of states certain subjects are mentioned in constitution that is there in the state government's list and certain subjects they are kept in concurrent list so we have to discuss that in obviously detail but uh, I am again saying that this is the last part of this short video uh, just I am explaining brief structure of our constitution here this is not 
perfect lecture this is just short and therefore i will recommend you to observe these full videos on our youtube channel that is savarkar iis study circle thanks for observing this series